technology and livelihood education, food processing, exploratory course for grade 7 and 8, module 5, based on MOS Essential Learning Competencies. Our topic is Interpret a Layout Plan. In the Philippines, we are surrounded with great percentage of water. One of the sources of living is true water. That's why most of the occupation are fishermen. Fishermen return to the seashore with fresh fish they have caught, and it will be of great help to know how to process their catch in order to transport their products with a good quality. Through this lesson, you will know the different fish processing activities inside the processing laboratory. These activities will serve as your guide in knowing the different signs and symbols in interpreting a layout plan. But before we start of the lesson, can you distinguish fresh fish from stale fish? Can you describe how the fresh fish looks like? Fish Processing Activities The term fish processing refers to the processes associated with fish and fish products between the time fish are caught or harvested and the time the final product is delivered to the customer. Fish is a highly perishable food which needs proper handling and preservation if it is to have a long shelf life and retain desirable quality and nutritional value. The central concern of fish processing is to prevent fish from deteriorating. The most obvious method for preserving the quality of fish is to keep them alive until they are ready for cooking and eating. Fish Processing Activities First is the receiving. This activity includes the sorting and grading of the fish according to its size, species, and quality. It also includes segregating suitable from a suitable one. Raw materials refers to fishes, newly caught, chilled, or frozen that are not yet subjected to the treatment with preservatives like salt, vinegar, and smoke. They are used during salting, curing, and smoking. Prior to processing of the fish, the raw materials must be efficiently prepared to achieve top quality processed products, maximum yield, and highest possible profits. The following are the descriptions of fresh fish and spoiled fish. For the fresh fish, the odor is fresh and fishy odor, the eyes is bright and bulging, pupil is velvet black, cornea is transparent. The gills is bright red, covered with slime odor until gill cover is fresh. For the spoiled fish, the odor is stale or putrid, the eyes is dull, wrinkled, sunken, pupil is dull, black, cornea is opaque. For the gills, dull brown or gray with cloudy slime, odor under gill cover is sour and offensive. For the fresh fish, the body color is bright, flesh is firm, stiff, body, finger impression do not remain, belly walls is intact, muscle or tissue is white, the bent is pink and not protruding. For the spoiled fish, the body color is faded, the flesh is soft and flabby, finger impressions remain, the belly walls open ruptured, viscera is protruding, and the muscle tissue is pinkish, especially around the backbone, and the vent is brown and protruding. Sorting fish according to their quality is done with the organoleptic evaluation of their condition based on the characteristic of fresh and stale fish. Below are the descriptions of the specific characteristics of fresh fish. First, a fish with a clear bright eyes have eyes with convex shiny black pupil and translucent cornea. Second, a fish with bright colored gills have gills which are shiny red or pink, not dull brown or gray. Third, the odor of a fresh fish is similar to what the newly gathered seaweeds. 
A fresh fish has a firm flesh characterized by a stiff body and texture elastic to slight pressure. Fifth, a fresh fish with intact belly walls have no protruding viscera and the walls are not soft or ruptured but firm and springy. Six, the fish with bright body color has a glossy appearance with body color typically of the species. Seven, the slime present in the fresh fish must be clear, colorless, and transparent in normal quantities at the gills and body. The following are the specific characteristics of a stale fish. First is the discoloration, which is discernible abnormal color changes in some parts characterized by varying degrees of spoilage. Second, damage is a defect in the fish which materially distracts from the appearance or edible or shipping quality of the fish. It includes loose scales, bruises, and abrasions due to the mishandling affecting more than 5% of the body of the fish. Cuts and the punctures made by tools used in catching or transporting fish that expose the flesh with length of one-tenth of the length of the fish or excessively deep. Number 3. The stale fish is considered to have loose scales when the scales have been removed from the skin over more than 5% of the surface area of the fish or when scales are easily rubbed off because of bacterial decomposition. Number 4. The eyes are considered slightly sunken if the eyes are not bulging or eyes slightly depressed. Number 5. The milky slime in the stale fish appears cloudy white and is slightly transparent. Number 6. Slightly discolored gills have abnormal color change from bright red or pink to dull gray or brown. Number 7. A fish with slightly soft flesh has a texture which is not elastic and leaves a dent or mark to slight pressure. Grading of fishery products Grading is evaluating the raw materials based on their organoleptic characteristics such as appearance, color, odor, and texture. Grading of fishery products The grading of fishery products is based on the organoleptic characteristics as shown in the grading of tuna. Organoleptic characteristics refers to the characteristics of a fish obtained through the use of the sense organs like color, odor, or texture. Grading of tuna. The following are the prescribed standards for tuna. Grade 1. This consists of strictly fresh fish processing the following characteristics. A. Eyes are clear and bright. Gills is bright red color. It has a fresh odor, firm flesh, and intact belly walls. The color of the body must be bright. And absence of discoloration, loose scales, bruises, abrasion, cuts, punctures, and other injuries. Grade 2 tuna. This consists of chilled or frozen fish which failed to meet the requirements for grade 1. The eyes is clear and bright the gills is bright red color it has a fresh odor firm flesh and intact belly walls normal body color characteristics of the species and absence of discoloration loose scales bruises abrasions cut punctures or other injuries grade 3 classification of tuna this consists of fish which failed to meet the requirements of grade 1 and 2, which has the following characteristics. The eyes is a slightly sunken, pupil is grayish, gills is slightly discolored and shiny, body is covered with somewhat like milky slime, abdomen and belly walls is a slightly soft, flesh and backbone is a slightly soft, odor is a slightly sour and somewhat like bread or weak acetic acid. Of grade tuna. This consists of fish which failed to meet the requirements of grade 1, 2, and 3 and therefore must be rejected. 
Another fish processing activities is the preparation. This includes the preparatory steps such as scaling, eviscerating, washing, cutting, brining, and pre-cooking the fish by steaming, blanching, or broiling. Steps in cleaning the fresh fish. First is the scaling. It is the removal of the scales from a fish using a blunt knife. A sharp knife is not used because it might injure the fish. The scales of a fish can be removed using the following. First is the knife or the back of the knife. Another is by the use of metal scaler. You can also use electric scaler. Eviscerating or gutting means the removal of the internal organs, viscera or guts, through the operculum. The next step is washing. Fish are washed using running water from a faucet or with strong jets of water from a water sprayer. To prevent contamination, hands, working area, cutting boards, knives, and other utensils should be properly cleaned with soap and water after using. Another fish processing activities is the processing or sterilizing. This activity involves the final processing and complete sterilization of the processed finished products. The next activity is the storing. Storage room is provided for storing finished products such as canned, bottled fish, smoked fish, salted fish, pickled fish, and other processed fishery products. Proper storage will also extend the shelf life of the product. Packaging. This processing activity involves the wrapping or enclosing food and fish products in bottles or in cans for the purpose of protecting and preserving the finished products. Labeling. The purpose of this activity is to give the correct information about the product. Here is one example of a layout of an ideal processing room. A time to remember. This is Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching.